In what is appearing to be a sad story, world-famous Olympic sprinter Usain Bolt has allegedly had his retirement funds stolen from him. I'm assuming the thief did this digitally, because if there's one dude you can't steal from in person, it's the guy who can outrun a cheetah. Up first, more than $1 billion has reportedly been misappropriated from local investment firms Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL, and from all indications, it could be higher. I've made numerous popular videos on why athletes go broke, and sadly it happens all the time, typically to the least suspecting people. Report, Olympic sprinter Usain Bolt's $10 million retirement fund wiped out after massive scam leaves him with only $2,000 in his account. I can't imagine how devastating losing $10 million would be. I have such empathy for people who have money stolen from them because of how damaging it is to the victim and everyone around them. As investigators probe the incident. Up to news time, the chief suspect had not been charged. Usain grew up in a town called Sherwood Content in Trelawney in northwest Jamaica. Based on images on Google, it doesn't appear to be a town of wealth. I think it's safe to say he had a humble upbringing. According to the International Monetary Fund, Jamaica had a GDP of about $15.5 billion in 2018. For reference, every U.S. state has a GDP more than the entire country of Jamaica. Vermont came in at number 51 on the list of U.S. states ranked by GDP, and its economy is two and a half times the size of Jamaica's. $10 million is an absurd amount of wealth that would place you in the top percentage of top percent of wealth globally, but even more so in a country the size of Jamaica. The incident, however, has been sparking debate about whether this is the largest fraudulent scheme locally in recent history. Javon Keys has our story. Users visiting the SSL website are prompted with a message that the company is currently under the direction of the Financial Services Commission. They recognize that clients may be feeling anxious and that they are monitoring the situation. In a twist of irony, their page indicates that you will experience financial freedom with SSL. It appears to be a single location bank in Jamaica. They claim that they will be the top advisor and financier in a financial institution, corporation, or small to medium companies. Your business becomes our top priority as we focus on raising capital, improving growth in the local economy, all to achieve the business goals. Their Facebook page indicates they have a 3.4 star rating on only 10 reviews. This business doesn't strike me as one where I'd be comfortable placing my money. SSL gives their clients access to both local and overseas investment options and has three services, financial, private wealth, and brokerage. Researching into this investment firm made me feel less and less confident that your money is safe with them. It's entirely possible that the standards for U.S. banks are the same as Jamaican banks, but the online media on this bank does not strike me as something legitimate. Our financial planning offers products to investors who are interested in SSL's investment advice. These products are prepackaged plans that are tailored to your personal risk tolerance and managed by the best asset management team. Before I mention the financial products they offer, we must first look at this news article that seems like an accurate warning sign. SSL branded problem institution by FSC five years ago flagged for culture of non-compliance and mismanagement. Their services offered are the Plum Plan with a minimum investment requirement of $25,000, Safe Solutions Plan with a minimum investment of $3,000, Money Managers Plan with a minimum investment of $10,000 Jamaican dollars. They definitely didn't hire someone with a background in product naming conventions. I wouldn't feel comfortable giving money to someone for them to manage my money on a Plum Plan. Private Wealth Management offers a highly personalized service catering to investors with a minimum investment of $100,000. The opinion is contained in an explosive eight-page report prepared by the FSC in February 2017 ahead of a meeting with SSL representatives who were trying to convince the regulators not to suspend its license. While having money certainly solves all of your problems if you don't have much, it doesn't mean you won't have problems for the rest of your life. The article further stated that Usain had been banking with these guys for 10 years and poof, all of the money is gone now. Our brokerage service caters to investors who are not interested in investment advice. These clients are simply looking for a licensed securities dealer to execute their trades. The minimum investment for this service is 5,000 Jamaican dollars. A Jamaica Observer source said the information was delivered to Bolt's management team last week just before the company went public about a massive fraud that sources say amounts to more than $1.2 billion. After seeing the products and services they offer, I'm just as shocked that they had $1.2 billion under management. For a country with such low GDP and low average income, it's pretty impressive they managed that much money. Their website claims that they had been successful in raising over $400 million privately for local companies and acted as the lead broker for the following IPOs. Clearly, this was a reasonably big company in Jamaica, but sticking to the theme of this video, it's hard for professional athletes to find who to really trust with their money, which is a major reason for going broke. Olympic athletes do not get paid by just attending the Olympic Games. These athletes 
commit to four years of work with no guarantee of any form of payment, notoriety, or medal placement. It's incredibly impressive what they do for their countries. A gold medal is worth $37,500, a silver medal is worth $22,500, and a bronze medal is worth fifteen grand. Usain Bolt won eight gold medals in his time as an Olympic athlete, so he only grossed roughly $250,000 from the medals. Obviously, sponsors paid a lot more. Forbes wrote an article detailing how Usain Bolt made $33 million in 2016 from sponsorships. TVJ News understands that a former manager at Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL, has been implicated in the fraud. I haven't found anything specifying what exactly happened for a billion dollars to be missing from a Jamaican investment firm. Fraud obviously happens every day around the world, but how did this bank become a victim for a billion dollars? I think this might be an internal issue. ESPN just published an article stating the amount of funds stolen from Bolt was $12.7 million with his account dropping to only $12,000 left. It doesn't appear to be business as usual here at Stocks and Securities Limited in Kingston. The brokerage firm, which started operations in 1977, is under increased scrutiny as within the last 24 hours, it's been alleged that a former manager has fleeced more than $1.2 billion and counting from various accounts of at least 40 clients. Unlike the next athlete who caused himself to file bankruptcy, this one isn't Bolt's fault. A major challenge that wealthy pro athletes face is trusting where their money is stored or invested. Many athletes get fleeced by someone close to them, whether it's a family member or a college friend who's now their business and investment manager, but this was different. I hope Usain Bolt is able to lawyer up and recoup his money because I very much dislike reading stories of athletes having their hard-earned money stolen from them from fraudsters. A story involving a fellow Vegas resident was released this week on ESPN. Vegas goalie Laner files for bankruptcy, cites $50 million debt. The Vegas Golden Knights have been nothing shy of a miracle success story ever since they began their franchise in 2017. There haven't been many negative stories in the news surrounding the team, which is far different than the Raiders. Vegas Golden Knights goaltender Robin Lehner and his wife have filed for bankruptcy in Nevada, citing up to $50 million in debts to dozens of creditors. Whenever I see these stories, I just get so bewildered. How in the world do you file bankruptcy owing creditors $50 million as a professional athlete? This guy made $32.5 $32.5 million so far in his career and has another $10.5 million remaining on his contract. What are you doing spending so much money that a $32.5 million salary is not enough? I just don't get it. I will never wrap my head around making so much money that you can retire basically from one season of making $6 million and yet the dude is in bankruptcy. In September 2019, Robin purchased snake breeding inventory for $850,000. A month later, Laner failed to pay the $150,000 earnest money deposit to buy the snakes. The problem was that Laner was playing for the Islanders, located in the lovely state of New York, making $1.5 million. While that's an amazing salary, you can wipe out half of it for agent fees, taxes, and everyone else grabbing at his money. So really, he made $750,000 before personal expenses, which, as a professional athlete in New York, you can probably drop that number by half again. So a dude with a net income of $350,000 purchased a snake breeding farm or something for $850,000. Let's call that a risky investment. A few months go by and Laner isn't able to pay the last installment payment, which led to this complaint. The plaintiff claimed that he was netting $350,000 to $400,000 a year from this business. I'm not familiar with the snake breeding business, but that's a pretty remarkable investment if you can get a 50% return in year one. There's a cliche with picking the wrong business partner that you may get bit. Well, in this case, it has a different meaning. Robin and his wife filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Often called the liquidation chapter, Chapter 7 is used by individuals, partnerships, or corporations who have no hope for repairing their financial situation. The economy has turned a bit recently, but it's unacceptable for a dude who's made $32.5 million during one of the most lucrative bull runs in our lifetime to end up broke. Like, dude, just buy real estate cash and hold. That's it. Game over. You win. But instead, this dude is buying snake farms and who knows what else. They claim to have $1 million to $10 million in assets and $10 million to $50 million in liabilities. My personal opinion, you should only go ultra leverage when you're young and broke so that the one home run you do hit gets you into the next socioeconomic class. Once you're rich and in the top 1%, you just buy safe assets, cash and hold. I don't understand how dudes go broke while they are an active professional athlete and making $6 million a year. Here's their house in Vegas that they were renting. It was super nice, so they were living well, and the biggest benefit of renting is no need for a large down payment. I found a judgment against Robin where he owed $300,000 to a company for what appears to be a loan. After interest owed, attorney's fees, court costs, and a penalty, he owed half a million dollars. This is how athletes go broke, man. You're making millions and taking out loans you can't pay back. A $300,000 loan becomes $500,000, half a million dollars for a loan. What are you buying? It hurts my head because 
because these athletes could just buy nice real estate that cash flows, and after about five years playing, they'll be making 30K a month at minimum, passively for the rest of their life. They filed for bankruptcy December 30th, months after a Wisconsin company sued Laner for $4 million claiming the NHL player and his father failed to make any payments last year on a business loan. That company is called Solar Code, and the website notifies you that they produce 100% green energy in a way the world has never seen before. Generally, bad investments are the biggest driver for athletes going broke and facing bankruptcy after signing a $25 million contract. The problem is athletes get rich by playing sports, not by building a business or investing, which is a recipe for wasting money. They list out all of the creditors, which is fascinating to me to see everyone they owe money to. A couple noteworthy participants are the Vegas Golden Knights, which is interesting to me that they're listed as a creditor. Maybe his future salary is unpaid, therefore it's a credit. I also see Westridge Property Management, who is the owner of his house, which I'm guessing means they weren't able to pay rent. There's also Sure Sports Lending. I've heard about lending services to athletes from someone in this business, and he said it's the biggest secret on why they go broke that very few people know about. One of their services is contract-based lending. They only lend out 30% of guaranteed contract money. What gets these athletes in trouble is they sign for $25 million over five years like Robin did. They then go take out a loan for let's say $8 million and invest in a business that loses money. Now you have to play out your contract to pay down debt. What happens when you get hurt? Here's another option for athlete business venture financing, which allows athletes to borrow against their future earnings. This is just a recipe for disaster, giving a young kid who's never built a business or invested before millions of dollars against their future earnings is like, hmm, what's the easiest way for an athlete to go broke? The New York Department of Taxation, along with multiple other states, showed up, meaning he didn't hire the correct accountant. What the average fan doesn't know is that athletes have to file state income taxes in every state they play in. It can get complicated for a sport like hockey that has four 41 home games in your home arena, but 41 away games at a variety of arenas in various cities and countries if you're in the NHL or NBA. Usain Bolt is likely not going broke after this incident. I can only hope that he invested his money wisely and the $12 million is a big hit but won't bankrupt him. Robin Lehner, on the other hand, clearly made some bad financial decisions that has led to him and his wife filing for bankruptcy in the middle of a $25 million contract. Despite the average salary increasing like crazy in professional sports, these stories are all too common. It's very unfortunate to hear and I hope they're both able to recover just fine. Thanks for watching.